One of the first jobs that I had, the first big job that I had when I was still in school that I remember uh, many years ago, uh, the first job I had was a newspaper round, like a lot of people. I got up in the morning, did a newspaper round, and then I, I did a milk round where they used to deliver milk. And you used to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and go on your milk round, and then you'd go off to school. Of course, if you did that today, they'd have a, 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 you know, a heart attack. Um, uh, but my first big job was in a fish and chip shop. Uh, I must have been about uh, 14, 15 years old. And that was my first big job. And I remember one of the hardest parts of that job for me was that when you did the job and someone would come in and make their order, you had to add it up in your head. You had to do arithmetic. You had to do couldn't. And you know, at first it took a wee while, but eventually you got to you, you get the, 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 the way it went, and that uh, you could do it really quick and you could add. Amen. And I think today it's one of the, the sad things that I find that a lot of times people can't add things or take away or multiply or divide. And actually the Bible is full of mathematical words, add to your faith and uh, division and multiplying and things like that. So maths is very good, amen, and as we'll see this morning, it's important when dealing with doctrine to be able to count at least one, two, three, amen. Very important. The difference between one and two and three, amen. Now I hope this morning everyone knows the difference between one and three. Uh, a few months ago I did a series on sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. But today's message, and it might be a few other messages, is on strange doctrines. Strange doctrines. And as we read in our scripture in 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy chapter 3, we found that in the last days would be a marked by strange and devilish doctrines, uh, seducing spirits. And you look at some of these cults and the things that are going on today uh, in Mormonism, so-called Jehovah's Witnesses, and many other cults out there, they have some strange beliefs. I'm not going to get into today, but Mormonism, for instance, teaches that, that one day if you marry enough women, and the emphasis is on marry enough women, you can be your own God and have your own planet and your own universe and you can have your own Jesus who will come and die for that planet. Now you think you're kidding, right? No, I'm not kidding. That's exactly what they believe, amen. Uh, the so-called Jehovah's Witnesses, and they're not Jehovah's Witness, amen, uh, Witnesses, but they're followers of a guy called Russell. They believe that Jesus and the devil were brothers. And they had a wee tiffy fight, you know, and they're still having wee tiffy fights. And uh, that's completely wrong. And the Bible says in 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy that there will be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And these people would speak lies and hypocrisy. And there's so much lying today going on in the world in the area of Christianity, let's be honest. Amen. As I said this morning, we had an invitation to a singing service and the fee was £55 per person. But because we're a church, we get a discount, amen? A 10% discount. So uh, it'll only be a little bit less than that, amen? And you don't have to go far, turn on the television, the, the internet, and find guys wanting uh, airplanes and houses and things like that. They want to, as the Bible says, make merchandise of you. Merchandise of you. And there are many people like that, and not only those who are uh, way out there and wanting jets and all the rest of it, but others who even claim to be Christians, even say that they are, they are teachers of the Bible, but they want you to fund their lifestyle. There's one in particular I know, he refuses to work. It's not that he can't work, he refuses to work. He lives off the grid and produces videos. And as we'll see this morning, he produces videos that are very toxic and very bad. He won't, it's not that he has a problem or a sickness or anything like that. He just refuses to work. But he wants you to fund his lifestyle. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Others, I met a guy just recently. He, 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 he's, he's an ex-drug addict. Or maybe not ex, I don't know. But he, he doesn't work. He will not work. 
Amen. It's not that he's sick or has a mental or a physical problem or something. I'm not talking about that. Amen. I'm talking about that he will not. He refuses. But he wants to produce videos so that you can fund his lifestyle. Amen. They want to make merchandise of you. And they will do all kinds of things to carry you away with their strange doctrines. And that's what it is. So this morning, I'm going to look at some things. And let me say right off the bat, we're going to look at the fact of the Godhead. Now, the Godhead is a biblical word. Okay? Now, you look up in any dictionary you like. Webster's, the New World, Cambridge, anything you like. And Godhead means deity. Godhead speaks of what has been called the Trinity, the three person of God. Now, God is three persons, but one God. Not three gods in one person, but one God in three persons. Now, we read in our scripture that Brother Benny read, 1 John chapter 5. Let's turn there, 1 John chapter 5. I don't know how far I'll get in this message. This might be continued, but we'll see. But this is very important because there are strange doctrines out there. And the Bible says that the pastor is the shepherd of the sheep. And being a shepherd, you've got to warn of the wolves. Amen. And there are wolves out there. Wolves who will try to devour you and make merchandise of you. And who will hate those who preach the truth, as we'll see. Okay, now I want you to notice this very carefully. I want you to get your arithmetic head on, okay? Because you're going to need it this morning. All right? I want you to notice this. First John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Now, can someone tell me, I want you to put your maths head on, okay? How many there are in heaven? Who can tell me? How many? Three. Let me read that again. I want to be careful of this, okay? For there are three that be record in heaven, okay? Three. One, two, three. Now, has everybody got that? How many are in heaven? Three that be a record in heaven. The Father, the Word, John chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, the Word was God. And you go down that chapter in, in John, it, it reveals that Jesus is the Word, okay? So the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, okay? That's the three we're talking about. And these three are one, okay? So there are three in heaven, and they are one. Now, when you look at the number one, or the word one, there are a couple of ways you can take it. You can take it meaning that one is singular. Or, you can look at it as one being unity. Now, when someone gets married, as as you're thinking about this, turn over to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. When someone gets married, the Bible says that two are made into one. Okay? That's what the Bible says. So, two become one. One flesh, two flesh become one flesh. Okay? So, when a couple gets married, like Debbie and I have been married, coming up for 35 years this year. See, I got it right. Amen. 35 years. I better get it right. (laughs) You do not forget things like that. But anyway... When we got married 35 years ago, we were two individuals, but scripturally and legally we became one. Now, is Debbie me? Am I Debbie? No. But we're one. Okay? I want you to see this for a second. All right. Um, John chapter 17, verse number 20. Now, I want to take this nice and carefully and slowly so we can see this. Okay, so it's very, very important. Neither pray I for these alone, 
but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Now notice this. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in, in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So the Lord is praying in John chapter 17, that all believers might be one. Even as Jesus and the Father are one. Now that's the contrast, okay? Now let me let me tell you this. Are we all one believer? We're one in Christ, but we're all individuals. Okay, there's Carol and Debbie and and, 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 and Becky and Bruce and so on and so forth. There are many of us, amen, but we're all one in Christ. That speaks of unity. Now, this unity is the same unity that Jesus and the Father has, okay? So, when it speaks of one in this context, it's speaking of unity. If you go over also to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, 14, uh, we're not going to turn there for the sake of time, but it talks about that we're all one body, okay? That we all might be one body, now, that doesn't mean that we're all going to be in heaven one Christian. It doesn't mean when we get to heaven, we're all going to be put together and be one person. We're one in unity. But we are individuals in that one. So Jesus says that they might be one, speaking of believers, okay? Their unity will be the same as our unity between God the Father and the Son of the Father, or God the Father, they are one, but they're two distinct personalities. Okay? And we're going to see that in a wee minute. All right? So, the characteristics of these people who believe this is they do not want to be told the truth. Titus 3.8 says this, now, uh, or uh, uh, 2 Timothy Chapter 3, 8 says this. Now as Janus and Jamres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. That means they've decided, I don't want to know the truth. They do not want to sit down and discuss the truth. They're just going to come out and give out their false doctrine. Their vile doctrine, and they're going to spew out hatred, they do not want to speak the truth or talk to you about the truth. In fact, what they'll say is, if that you don't believe what they believe, you're not saved. You're damned and going to hell. That's one of the, the tricks that the Catholic Church does, by the way. They say, you believe what we believe or you're going to go to hell. Oh, no, no, the Bible says, search the Scriptures. And they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. The Bible says to search the scriptures, to look at the scriptures. But people who are involved in cults and things like that, they say, well, you better believe what I believe or you're damned and going to hell. They don't want to discuss the scriptures. They want to use fear and intimidation. Well, if you don't believe what I believe, you're going to go to hell. So we're going to look this morning at some of these strange doctrines. And we're going to look at what the Bible actually says. Okay? Now, I want you to turn to Acts chapter 17 and verse number 10. Now this, we're going to look at a lot of scriptures this morning, and this may take a little bit of time. Uh, please bear with me, okay? Because this is important. And I want you to notice... The counting here, okay? We're going to do some counting. Some counting. When I grew up, you learned the three R's. Reading, writing. What was the other one? And writing, yes. Acts 17. Acts 17 and verse 10 through 12. Now I want you to, I want you to think in your mind as we read these scriptures... How many people we're talking about? Okay. Acts chapter 17 verse 10 says this. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas. 
by night into Antiberia, who coming thither went into the synagogues, singing of, of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore, because of that, many of them believed and of, also of honorable women which were Greeks and of men not a few. So it was Paul and Silas. How many people? Two. Paul and Silas. Two people. Okay? I want you to notice that. Okay? Right, now. The Bible says, in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8, Reprove a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke, rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. So if you go to a wise person and you show them the Bible, the Word of God and say, let's sit down and see what the Bible says, they're going to thank you for it. They're going to increase in learning. But someone who says, no, 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 I don't want to discuss what the Bible says. You're just a heretic. You're just going to hell. The Bible says that's a scorner. That's someone who does not want to hear the truth. Proverbs 12, 1. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. Proverbs 15, 32. He that refuseth instruction despises his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. So the Bible says if you're wise, if you want to be wise... You will receive instruction and reproof. But if you're a scorner and not wise, you don't want to talk about it. You just want to go off on a tirade. I want to look at three things this morning. First of all, the source of these strange doctrines. Usually the people who put about these false doctrines are those who have a wrong understanding of the Scriptures. Normally they are novices and unlearned in the Scriptures, the Word of God. They are taken over by seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Now let me, let me tell you this, you can be a Christian, you can be saved, and you can be wrong. Amen. But when you refuse to sit down and look at the Bible, the Word of God, and say, no, 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 my YouTube teacher tells me this, so I'm going to follow him. You're saying the Word of God doesn't mean as much as your YouTube teacher. Now, I was once asked a question, who do you recommend on YouTube? Now, there are lots of good guys on YouTube. Uh, you, 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 you can find some help and some instruction and some good guys. But I must tell you, this comes first. You're better to get into the Word of God than YouTube. When you get in YouTube, you'll find all kinds of people with all kinds of warts and problems and difficulties, and they're just people who can get it wrong. But the Word of God is not wrong. Amen. So you're better to follow that. Amen. Exactly. Paul said to Titus, he was to speak the things which become sound doctrine. If you follow UT teachers, uh, uh, you, you'll find an unbalanced mind and people who have motives. Well, you know, I live off the grid. You need to buy my house. I need a truck. You need to give me $30,000. I'm not kidding. That's what they say. Paul said to Titus, speak the things that become sound doctrine. Ephesians 4.14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. I think it was E.L. Bynum who said there's a, there's a fool or a mug born every single day. And they're all over the place. 
We have to look at the simplicity of the scripture that talks about the Godhead. As we saw in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, uh, there are three that bear a record in, there are three that bear record in heaven, uh, the, the, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So there are not just one, but three. Now you see, but they're all the same, really. Okay? They're just the same. Really, it's a different mask. There's a doctrine that's called modalism. Okay? And modalism basically says that Jesus is the Father. And Jesus is the Holy Spirit. He just puts a different mask on. Ha ha! Now you see me. Now you don't. Now I'm something else. I kid you not. Let's look again at 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now we saw, and, and there's many other verses, that one speaks of unity, right? Now if you want to see the Bible explanation of that, you go to verse number 8, okay? Remember, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy, Holy Ghost, right? The Holy Spirit. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. More unity. Is the blood the water? No. Is the Spirit the blood? No. There are three that bear record, and these three agree in one. We sang in our song this morning about, you know, a uh, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. Uh, some people use the word Trinity. I prefer the word Godhead. It's in the Bible. Uh, but basically, it's God the Father, God the Son, or the Son of the Father, as it says in the, in the Bible, and God the Holy Spirit. These are three, but they're one God, right? Now, Christians have believed that since the time of Christ. It was not a doctrine started by the Roman Catholic Church. Absolutely not. You can go down in history, the, the Roman Catholic Church was started in about three, uh, AD 325 by the Emperor Constantine, but never became a, a, an organized religion until uh, AD 606. Before that time, Christians have always said that God exists in three persons, but one God. Not three gods in one person, but three persons in one God. Now, I know that's sometimes hard to understand. Because we are finite, trying to understand the infinite. I remember as a young man growing up, I used to ask myself the question, when you get to the end of the universe, what's beyond that? It, it, it just blows our mind away. Where does the universe stop? And if it stops, what's beyond that? That's the infinity of the universe. God is infinite, infinite. His ways, the Bible says, are past finding out. But what we can do is, you see, and here's there are many doctrines in the Bible, right? That we don't understand fully everything about them. But we are to believe them. Amen. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Son, the Word, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Okay, that's what, simply what the Bible says. Okay, uh, there's no doubt about that. So there's three. Um, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Let us. Notice he didn't, didn't say, let me make man in my own image. Let us make man in our image. Now, all of us have three parts. Body, soul, and spirit. So we're made in the image of God. We are three, but one human being. God is three, but one God. Three persons, all distinct Individual persons, it's not a mask. Ha! Uh, three persons, one God. Okay? Now, 
I'm not much for the Greek and Hebrew, but I was reading recently in a book uh, called The Kosher Peg, Return of the Kosher Peg, uh, about the name, the, the Hebrew name Elohim, right? In Deuteronomy 6, 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, okay? And that's talking about Elohim, right? El in Hebrew means God, right? Elohim, according to this, this book, looking at the Hebrew, that says, Elohim says, they are God. Not they are gods, they are God. Who's the they? Now we saw last week, last Sunday night, we did a little bit of study on this. Um, in Hebrews chapter 1, verses uh, 8 and 9, the, but, but God, the Lord said, uh, in fact, I'm not quoting it right, so let's go there, Hebrews chapter 1. It's important to accurately say what the Bible says. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. Now I want you to notice this. There are two people talking here. Now, let me say this, okay? And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to be mean. All right? Schizophrenia is a terrible mental affliction. Right? I'm not saying anything bad about it. Okay? People who have mental health problems need all the help they can get. And that includes Christians, by the way. Let me just throw in here that if you're a Christian, doesn't mean that you have a perfect mind. Okay? Doesn't mean you're never going to have any problems either physically or mentally. And there's nothing, just because you're a Christian, doesn't mean you can give up your medicines. Or your medical advice. Okay? The Bible says we are to be wise. I just threw that in there for nothing. Okay? But let me say, God is not a schizophrenic. God does not suffer from schizophrenia. Alright? He doesn't. God knows everything. He's God. Look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. But unto the Son, He saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Unto the Son, he saith. Who's talking to who here? God is saying to the Son, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Matthew chapter 22 says this. The Lord Jesus Christ talking here. He's talking about in Psalms how that David described uh, the Lord and the Messiah. Okay, Matthew chapter 22 verse 44 says this. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Luke chapter 20 verse 42 says this. And David himself said, saith in the book of Psalms, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand. So David said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit on my right hand. Who was David's Lord? Psalm 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So the Lord said to my Lord, now is God schizophrenic? Is he talking to himself? If he's just the one person with many faces or three faces, who's he talking to? The Lord said to my Lord. See, here's, here's the thing about the fact of the Godhead, that God the Father and God the Son are different persons. They talk to each other. They interact with each other. Jesus said, I came not to do mine own will, but the Father's will. Here's a, here's a, turn, turn to John, again, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. And verse 28. This is not so much preaching as, as teaching, but I believe it's very good and important thing. 
Now, for the modalist, or those who follow a certain YouTube person, okay, this destroys their whole argument. They say that Jesus is the Father, and the Father is Jesus. That they are the same person. Okay? John chapter 14, verse 28 says this. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father. You can't go unto yourself, first of all. Okay? If, if you're going to the shops, the shops are not you. If you're going to the Father, you can't be the Father. Okay? I go to the Father, now notice this, for my Father is greater than I. So if Jesus is the Father, how can the Father be greater than Him? You can't. Two different persons. Now the reason why he said that is found in Philippians chapter 2. Because he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. He became a man on earth. So that positionally there, he was restricted but he was still God. When he lay in the manger, Jesus was still completely almighty God. When he was on the cross, he was almighty God. But he became a man. He had a human nature. But he was still God. Now I'm going to read some verses here, and I want you to count this. <clears throat> How many people are mentioned? Acts chapter 13, verse 43. Now, when the, and when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas. How many people? Good. Acts 17.10. Read this one. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Beth and to Berea. How many people? 1 Corinthians 1. Paul called to be a, an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sir Anthony's our brother. How many people? Two. Uh, Philippians 1.1. 1, 1. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ. How many people? Two. 1 Thessalonians 1.1. 1, 1. Paul and Silvanius and Timotheus. How many people? Three. Okay. Many other verses I could have put in there, but for time I didn't. Now, how many? 1 Timothy 1 2. And to Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. How many people? Two. 2 John 1 3. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. How many people? Two. Galatians 1.1, 1, 1. Paul an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. How many people? Two. Galatians 1.3, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. How many persons? Two. 1 Thessalonians 1.1, 1, 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of Thessalon Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 1 2. To Timothy, my beloved, dear, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. 2. Titus 1 4. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Now I could go through many, many, many different scriptures that illustrate that there are two persons here. And also in 2 John 1, 3, there are God the Father and Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father. Now, as I said on Sunday night, I got my name John from my father. And when I go and visit my relatives, I did this recently in a funeral, they come up to me and say, oh, you, your father, son, all right, I can see your father in you. And I hate when they say that. Oh, I can see you, I can see Johnny in you. Oh, yeah, that's what they say. I can see your father in you. Now, I'm the son of my father, but I'm not my father. But I am the son of my father. So when 2 John chapter uh, uh, 1 verse 3 says that God the Father and from Jesus the Son of the Father, they are two different persons, but one God. There are three that bear record in heaven. 
God the Father, the Son of the Father, or God the Son, Son of God, God the Son, same thing, and the Holy Spirit. They are all God. Now, I want to show you, I want to show you now some scriptures that, that, that show clearly that Jesus is not the Father. Jesus is not the Father. Judges chapter 20, verse 11 says this, So all the men of Israel were gathered together against the city, knit together as one man. So when all Israel was gathered together, were they really just one man, or was that speaking of unity? They were all together as one man. Okay, There wasn't one big Israelite. You didn't take all the people of Israel like Goliath and put them all together and make a huge 300-foot Israelite. He's talking about unity. It's what they call in the English a simile. Okay? It's a describing word. Now, an interesting thing, in the tribulation, Satan counterfeits what God does. You have the beast, the false prophet, and the woman who rides the beast. The satanic trinity. If the devil is copying what God did, why would the devil bother to have three persons but one devil? In John chapter 10, verse 30, you don't have to turn there, but we, just for the sake of time, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. That doesn't mean that they're one person. It means they're one in unity. We saw in John chapter 17, that he wanted the believers to be as one, even as God the Father and the Son were one. We're not all one believer. Okay? Can you imagine the fight that would be? If we all had to be one believer. No, no, it's going to be me. No, no, I'm going to be the one. He said, my father and one. He's talking about unity. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14, uh, 12 through 14, speaks about the one body of, of the Christians. We're all parts of that body, but we're one. But not one Christian. Um... We saw this on Sunday night, and if you've not seen that, you can look on the YouTube or Sermon Audio, we'll have that. But first of all, the baptism of Jesus, Matthew chapter 3, when Jesus was baptized, it says this, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answering, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And notice this, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. That Jesus is there. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God. Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is there. Descending like a dove, and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is there. God the Father is there. Three. Three, one. There's another passage in uh, Acts chapter 7. When Stephen is, is, is being martyred, when he's being uh, killed, uh, and there again you see the fact that, uh, that um, Jesus is there, the Holy Spirit is there, and God is there. Acts chapter 7 verse 54 says this, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, so Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost, looking steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. Now notice this. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Maybe he needed glasses. He was seeing double. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. So he saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God. The three were there, the Holy Ghost, Jesus, and God, who was on the throne. There's more of that in the um, video on Sunday night. The Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Three. The Great Commission was to go and preach the gospel in the name of three persons. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Three, but one God. Okay? Jesus said, I can of mine own self do nothing as I hear, I judge, 
and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. The Father sent Jesus. So Jesus didn't send himself. He sent the Father. The Father sent him. There are many other passages of Scripture um, that we could go into, but we're not for the sake of time. Um, Jesus, Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 16 and 18, If I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. Okay? Jesus said, In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. He said, I and the Father are, are together. So they can't be the same. If there's two of them, if there's two witnesses, there has to be two of them. Now, my math, I think, is pretty good. One plus one is two in the normal number system. Now, we can get into different number systems, could be Ross, and uh, that might be a little bit different. But in the normal number system that we use on a daily, daily basis, one plus one is two. So if Jesus said, I am not alone, but I and the Father, there are two of them. When Jesus says, in, in, in your law it says, in mouth of two witnesses it shall be established, then there's two of them. What does that mean for you and I? It means that we can worship God and be glad that he is God. To say that Jesus is not the Father is not to put the, the Lord Jesus Christ down. You cannot have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are three, but one God. All co-equal, all co-eternal, speaking to each other, having a relationship to each other. You can go into the book of Proverbs, we didn't for the sake of time, <coughs> that Jesus talked about uh, the interaction he had with God the Father before the world began, how they, they, they talked to each other, they discussed things, they planned uh, the redemption and so forth. In John, John chapter 17 and verse 5, Jesus says this, in verse 4, we'll see, uh, 4 and 5. I've glorified thee on earth. I finished the work which thou gavest me to do. So God the Father gave Jesus work to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, <coughs> with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So Jesus was not alone, but he was with God. Now, when you're with someone, that means... There's more than one. Amen. If I'm with my wife, you don't expect just to see me. Amen. <coughs> you like to see my bare part. Amen. My bare half. Amen. Oh, here comes John and Debbie. John is with Debbie. You don't expect just to see me. Now, this all comes down to the fact there's much confusion today. There are seducing spirits, doctrines of devil, and this modulism is certainly one of them. <coughs> Amen. It is wrong from the scripture. Now, I don't hate anybody. I, I, I'm, I'm always willing to sit down and discuss from the scriptures what the Bible says about the word of God. I'm happy to do that. But if someone turns around and says, no, nope, no, I'm not going to listen to the word of God. I don't want to discuss it. I'm just going to run off like a spoiled wee laddie and, and, and produce my YouTube videos and, 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 and just spout lies. Then you've made your judgment. You've decided to go off with your doctrines of devils, your seducing spirits, and your YouTube teachers that are leading you the wrong way. The best way you can do is to, or the best thing you can do is get in this word, the Bible, the word of God. Now, I know it takes time. It's, 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 it's a lot of reading, amen. <coughs> but it will help you to get into the word of God. And one of the things you'll find in the word of God, I didn't go through all these verses, a whole bunch of verses here. But, you know, you'll find that the fact that there is the Godhead. The Godhead means deity. All right. It means the great three in one, which has been believed, has been believed by Christians from the time of Christ. Every century since then, they've talked about the three in one. Now, I'm not uh, uh, saying that the men are right and we should follow men, but even the Bible says, for there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three 
are one. And that one speaks of unity. Not just the number one, but unity. Just like believers, God wants us to be one in Christ. We're not all the one believer, but we're one in unity. And and I'll finish this, this morning with the words of that song. God in three persons, perfect trinity. That's what the Bible says. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this word.